Here we'll discuss kind of the basic idea of what a limit is. So let's suppose you are watching some object move across the room. And we can draw a graph indicating where it moved. However, for just a second you closed your eyes, so you're not really sure what happened during that second. But you know what happened directly before and directly after. So now the question is, where was that object at the second where you closed your eyes? And while you can't definitively say because you were not looking directly at it, you have a pretty good idea of where it was. And this is kind of the idea of a limit. It's what happens right around there, so what predictions can you make for what happened at that exact moment? So now that we have a little bit of the idea, let's do the actual definition of a limit. First, for a limit, we need to consider our function, f of x. We want to know, essentially, as x is moving closer and closer to some specific point x0, what happens? And it's important to note that we don't want to know exactly what happens at x0, just what happens is we get really close to x0. And this is the limit. What happens as you get really close to x0 is the limit. So we do have some notation for this. We have limit, which we abbreviate with LIM. We write x arrow x0. Keep in mind that x0 is a known point f of x equal to a number l. So this is our notation for a limit. So now that we have a little bit more of an idea of what's going on, let's do an example. Here we can see a graph, and I have two limits written down at the bottom that we're going to try to evaluate. The first is the limit as x approaches negative 2. So we want x to be negative 2, and we're going to consider what's happening really close to that and see exactly what's going on in the y direction. Well, notice as we're getting closer and closer to negative 2, the y direction is getting closer and closer to the number 2. And this is exactly what the limit is. Even though our function is actually not defined at negative 2, we are able to find the limit. We want to know what happens close to it. What about at 4? Now we want to look right around 4 and see exactly what's going on with the function. And we can see that both sides of this function are getting closer and closer and closer to 0. Even though my actual function defined at 4 is equal to 2, the limit is actually 0 because we don't actually care what happens to our function at that particular point. We just want to know what's happening very, very, very close to it. And very close to the point, the point x equal to 4, we're getting very close to y equal to 0. Next, let's look at this graph. The limit as f of x approaches is x approaches 0. Well, we want to look what happens right around the point 0 and see exactly what our graph is doing. Well, notice on one side it's getting really, really close to negative 3, and on, or positive 3, and on the other side it's getting really close to negative 2. And in this case, whenever we can't say that it goes to a single number, we say the limit does not exist. D-N-E for does not exist. Another example, this is a function. We want to know what the limit as x approaches 0 is. So once again, we're going to look right around 0. And if we do that, we'll notice on both sides, this number is getting really, really, really big in the y direction. And in fact, it's just increasing without bound. When that happens, we say the limit is equal to infinity. In this case, there's not a particular number that it's approaching. Instead, it's just going to go off forever. So our limit is infinite. 